This is our project, Internet Explorer, Targeted Representation Learning on the Open Web. This is joint work between Alex Lee, Ellis Brown, Alyosha Efros, and Deepak Patak. Consider this extremely common scenario in machine learning where you're given a target dataset and a corresponding task, like classifying bird species. You're faced with this question, what would you do to get maximum performance? What you'd probably do is transfer learning where someone uses a large dataset to pre-train a model which you then fine tune on your target data set. I want to talk more about this pre training process. Our pre training data sets are getting bigger and bigger. ImageNet has 1.2 million images, Clip was trained on 400 million image caption pairs, and the recently released Leon data set even has 5 billion image caption pairs. But when you consider these static data sets and how much time and effort it took to curate and scale them to their current size, we see that they'll always pale in comparison to the internet, where billions of images are uploaded every single day. These static datasets will forever be minuscule and out of date in comparison to the data available on the full internet. This brings us to our proposal. We think that you should treat the internet itself as a dataset, but it isn't any regular dataset. In fact, it has a variety of useful properties. It's open-ended, constantly growing, and always up to date with what's happening in the world. So in contrast to the current paradigm where someone uses a static data set to pre-train a general purpose model that you then fine tune on your target data set, we flip the picture. We start with a target data set that we care about and we want to train a specialized model that does extremely well on this target data set. We do this by taking advantage of the data available on the internet. So we'll iteratively download and learn from new data and then focus on our remaining knowledge gaps. Since we iteratively search the internet for relevant training data, we call our method Internet Explorer. So what can we actually do with the full breadth of data on the internet? For one, we can learn features for any task, even those that are out of the distribution of the most popular pre-training data sets. We can also acquire the data necessary to cover the long tail corner cases that we might encounter at test time. But maybe most importantly, we can find up-to-date training data so that our models are always aware of what's happening out in the real world. What can go wrong if your model isn't trained on up-to-date data? Well, as the Microsoft Bing chatbot shows, it'll tell you something that's out of date and then make fun of you for thinking otherwise. We hope that Internet Explorer can make use of the full breadth of data on the internet, but there are actually several challenges in doing so. For one, what do we search for? What data on the internet is useful? And how do we integrate the downloaded data into our model? To answer this, we draw an analogy to reinforcement learning. For a robot explorer, an agent needs to interact with the environment by choosing actions and getting back observations and rewards. In order to maximize its return, it needs to iteratively explore to find the best plan of action. Similarly for us, our Internet Explorer agent interacts with an environment, that's the internet. It takes actions that are search engine queries, and it gets back observations that are internet search results. Finally, it has to maximize the reward, which is the relevance of the downloaded training data. This brings us to our Internet Explorer method. In the first step, we sample queries. We use a vocabulary of about 150,000 different concepts which are drawn from WordNet, and we learn a distribution over these concepts. This distribution assigns high probability to concepts that are thought to be useful and low probability to concepts that are thought to be irrelevant. We sample a concept from this distribution and optionally use a language model to sample a descriptor that will give us more visual variety in our results. We use our generated query to download images from an online text-to-image search engine. Then, we perform self-supervised training on the downloaded images. We use Moco v3 to minimize the contrastive loss, but you can use any self-supervised learning algorithm you like. Finally, we update our concept distribution. For each downloaded image, we calculate the relevance reward with respect to the target dataset. Then, we use the calculated rewards to increase the probability of useful concepts. For example, since ducks are highly relevant to the bird target dataset, they'll get high reward and will increase the probability of concepts like duck. Irrelevant concepts like BMW will get low reward and then decrease in probability. Our method is cyclical, so it continues executing each step in sequence, finding increasingly relevant data and learning better representations. 
Let's talk about the specifics of our image reward, which prioritizes finding relevant data. Given a downloaded image, we use our learned encoder to get the representation of this image. We can do the same for each image in our target data set. Our relevance reward is just going to be the average cosine similarity between the downloaded image's representation and its k nearest neighbor's representations from the target data set. This is effective because an irrelevant image, like this picture of a zebra, will be far away on average from the target dataset representations. The last key component of our method is that we can predict the quality of unseen queries. Our vocabulary has about 150,000 possible concepts, and we need to estimate how good each untried concept is after only seeing results for a few thousand queries. We do this by calculating an image level reward for each downloaded image, grouping by query, and averaging the per image awards to get per query rewards. So we average the reward for each BlueJ image to get a BlueJ query reward. Then we fit a Gaussian process regression model to the observed rewards using pre-trained text embeddings of the queries as features. This lets us estimate the value of untried queries based on semantic similarity to tried queries. These estimated rewards then determine what we search for in the following iteration. So what's changing over time with our Internet Explorer method? First, of course, we're downloading new images in each iteration. But second, the representation space in which we compare images also changes. This is a bit nuanced. As our representations change over the course of training, our image relevance reward also changes, since it's computed in that representation space. To be more clear, in the first iteration, we start with a relatively poor model that embeds images more or less randomly in their representation space. This means that our image reward, which we use to determine which images are helpful, isn't very good at distinguishing good images from bad images. However, as we train longer, our representations become more structured. Now, using the updated representation space, our image relevance reward is more capable of identifying useful and relevant data, and we can prioritize finding more of that in later iterations. Let's look at some results. We find that Internet Explorer finds relevant data purely by using self-supervised exploration. Let's say it's given just the images from our target data set, like BirdSnap. In iteration 0, it must explore purely randomly, searching for a wide variety of images. By iteration 1, it starts looking for nature-oriented photos. And by iteration 3, it's already identified relevant bird data on the internet. In iterations 6, 10, and 15, Internet Explorer narrows in on the relevant bird images, continually downloading them and using them for self-supervised training. We compare the linear probing representation quality of different models on a variety of target tasks, including BirdSnap, flowers, food, pets, and VOC 2007. We see that the MoCo v3 model, pre-trained on just ImageNet and the target dataset, does poorly in these tasks. If we start with this checkpoint, we can then turn to the internet to acquire more training data. Notably, how you search the internet really matters. If you generate queries uniformly at random from the vocabulary, performance stays about the same. Searching for just the class name slightly improves accuracy, but Internet Explorer, which is purely self-supervised, significantly improves performance on each dataset, and seeding Internet Explorer's initial queries with the class names further improves performance. Internet Explorer improves the linear probing accuracy by up to 23 percentage points in just 40 hours of training and searching on one GPU. Notably, we're able to match or outperform CLIP which was trained using 32 times as many GPU hours and 180 times as much data. This is especially interesting since CLIP's training set contains data corresponding to a superset of our vocabulary, so it can be considered an Oracle model. The key is that Internet Explorer can narrow in on the key concepts and selectively acquire more data for them. Finally, we find that Internet Explorer is robust to the choice of search engine. For the results we've seen so far, we use Google Images, but we try other search engines as well. We try Flickr photo search and additionally create our own search engine with minimal inductive bias. Our custom search engine is built on a subset of Leon 5 billion and it searches using approximate nearest neighbors in a language model text embedding space. Note that no image features are used here whatsoever. Given a query like Sunflower, our custom search engine finds images whose captions are close to Sunflower in the text embedding space. 
We find similar trends regardless of whether you use Google Images, Flickr Photo Search, or our custom Leon search engine. Random search isn't affected with any engine, and Internet Explorer still improves significantly with each. We find that Google is best, likely due to it having indexed the largest pool of images. To end on a high-level note, we hope to draw parallels with what deep learning was able to accomplish. Deep learning moved away from handcrafted, practitioner-curated features and went towards letting the model automatically learn what features it wants for our particular task of interest. Similarly, our hope with Internet Explorer is that we can move away from handcrafted datasets and go towards letting the model acquire the data it wants from the Internet. Thanks for listening, and we hope you check out our website for more information.